They shut down Homeland Security. Scary. But this is another dream. And this dream is not mine. This is from one of my listeners who gave me a dream before. And her, her code name is Believe. You remember her. Well, this dream is quite scary. And I'm going to tell it from a first person standpoint as if it's my dream, even though it's not, just so that it will flow more naturally. Okay, here we go. In this dream, I dreamt I lived in an apartment complex <clears throat> with my daughter. I looked outside my apartment window, and all of a sudden, when I looked, I saw what looked like a satellite, but it had the words NASA on the outside, and it was some type of a spacecraft. And as I watched it, in wonder, it just disappeared right before my eyes, just like that. And I looked at this thing and I said, oh my goodness. <laughs> then the next thing that happened was I noticed this thing at ground level. It looked like a giant deck, like something that belonged to a naval uh, ship of some kind, a naval vessel. Only this thing had wheels. It was extremely large. I'm wondering what the heck is going on. All these people are all over the street and guess what they are? They're law enforcement. Only they're not ours like what we're used to seeing. These guys have plain clothes. They're plain clothes. Kind of like uh, high security. And here's the thing that's scary. They're not smiling. They're not friendly. And they don't look like they're there to protect us either. Well, I noticed some of them had very big guns. This was so scary. I, I just couldn't figure out what was going on. Okay, the next thing that happens... One is standing outside the apartment complex. And then another one knocks on my door, my apartment door. And when I answer the door, he says with a stern voice, hurry up, you have to get out of there and get outside so you can follow the other people. And I'm thinking, what on earth? Okay, then I noticed two what seemed to be um, law enforcement personnel, more like detectives. But the thing that was really strange was they didn't seem to have any authority. It was as if what they said really didn't count. They were following the orders of these big gun guys like we were. And they look scared. They look very concerned. And I'm telling you, uh, this is the thing that hurt me was as I was getting ready to go. I knew I had to leave my three dogs because they told us, bring only the clothes on your back. So there was no way for them to be cared for. Then, I, since the law enforcement, the two, looked more compassionate, they looked concerned for us. I asked them, I said, well, I said, what's going on? And they said, right out of their mouths, they shut down Homeland Security. And then they hurried up and, and got back and, you know, got the people back in line, getting them going again. I couldn't believe my ears. I, I'm thinking, wait a minute. I know I, I felt this coming. I sensed it coming. I I've had dreams, all kind of warning dreams, but this thing is really, this is real. This is really coming to pass. And it's happening a whole lot sooner than I thought it would. Okay. I noticed there was a policeman. He was like a, um, a retired policeman in the hallway. Yeah, I guess he lived in the apartment complex as well. I don't know. 
But as he was going along, I asked him, because he looked like he was trying to figure out how he was going to escape or protect himself. And I asked him, could I go with him? He didn't answer me. He was so caught up in his and what was going on in his mind and his emotions. I don't even think he noticed I said anything to him. This was such a scary day. I am telling you. I could hear the people rustling downstairs. I could feel the concern in the air. It was it was just crazy. And with all these guys all over, everywhere, I mean, it was like everywhere you looked, they were running around like ants. They were covering the ground. It, it was very, very alarming. So anyway, the next thing that happened was I noticed, I think I mentioned before, they had large guns, right? Okay. Well, after... We went outside, or no, excuse me, right before we went outside, I forgot we hadn't gotten out yet, I saw my daughter, and I remembered, oh no, I've got to get my medication, and she went inside to grab the medication and something else she needed, I, I'm not quite clear on that, I think it might have been her Bible, but anyway, as she came out, you know, and we got ready to head on out, um, it was just, it was just so scary. It was, everybody had looks of concern all over their faces. It was, I, I, I don't even know what to say about this. I don't know what you think about this, but it really scared me. Anyway, um, when I went back to get, I mean, when my daughter went back to get the medication, I had to help her pry the door open because these guys had put something to block the doors so people couldn't get back into their apartments. Isn't that weird? I don't know what that was about. So we had to pry to get inside so I could get my medication out. That was weird. Okay, but anyway, my daughter grabbed what she could grab, and then we went downstairs with the crowds, or with the captives, because there was no freedom. There was no freedom, and there was no peace in this situation. It just felt horrible. And then here was this here was the crazy part. The law enforcement people were acting so much meaner. Okay? And then somebody hollered. They yelled, It's getting dark outside. I think they said outside, but they hollered, it's getting dark. And boy, the people, all, all of us started to scramble downstairs as quickly as possible because somehow we all sensed that the law enforcement that were forcing us out would actually do something horrific if we didn't move quickly enough. And if we didn't get out before the dark hit us, who knows? We didn't know if they would shoot somebody. or We didn't know what they would do to us. And we didn't want to know. But anyway, all of a sudden, as the darkness came, my daughter stuck her fingers in her ear as if to block it all out. And she immediately started praying in tongues. And then I woke up. What a dream that was. Anyway, Patricia talking now. I am going to post some scriptures later on. And um, I wanted you to know the other scripture that that um, Believe wanted you to know about. She What came to her mind was Job chapter 12, verse 16 through 25. And, of course, our, our all-time favorite, Psalms 46. And the verse that came to her, I believe, was verse 1 which is, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Amen. We will not fear, saints. 
God is with us no matter what. If Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could go into the fiery furnace, face it head on, and say, if we perish, we perish, but we will not bow. And you know hot burns and it hurts. And they were willing to go through that. And of course, Jesus was with them in the midst. Because what's-his-face did not see three, he saw four when they looked in that fiery furnace. All right? So remember, whatever we have to go through, God is with us. Emmanuel, our Father, is with us. And we will activate in the power of his might. Amen? God bless you. And peace. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. Amen? That's your father talking. Fear not.